place on Earth where you're going to find uh, a 4.5 billion year old layer uh, and every single layer in between. This, uh, um, because of the natural processes of the Earth, the way we understand the natural processes of the Earth, uh, we have two, two basic processes, deposition and erosion. Deposition puts things down and erosion takes things away. To say there's no evidence that, any, that there was any stability, well, I would ask about the Lake Tanyanyika footprints, the hominid footprints that are 3.2 million years old. There was a layer of volcanic sediment deposited. Some early humans, early hominids, walked across the ash layer. And then there was another volcanic eruption that buried the footprints. So that obviously there had to be some point in time when that landscape was stable. People were walking across it. It didn't just all appear in one instance. In fact, where did these footprints come from if all the human beings were, were being wiped out in this single flood instance, and the ones that survived were all on the ark, safe and sound? Who were these folks that were walking across leaving these footprints in these layers where there should be nothing in between these layers? Because the layers all were put down at the same time. Um, uh, in terms of finding things like trees in the geologic column, we find all kinds of unusual things in the geologic column. It's because the Earth is not static. It moves around a lot. In fact, um, if you want to understand stratigraphy, which is the science, the study of the, of the layers of the Earth, and you'll learn this in geology class, you have to understand that we talk about uh, layers being deposited, the oldest ones first, kind of like building a layer cake. You put the first layer of cake on, put a little icing on it, put the next layer on top. Which one was there first? The one at the bottom. But we also talk about that in a conformable sequence. That means where there hasn't been any evidence of earthquakes or volcanism or things where things get shifted around, things get mixed up. Um, that's quite common. And you have to be able to read the earth. Um, I have to stop there, but thank you. Oh, I guess I have the next question. This one says, Mr. Hartman, why do you think people should have more than one religion and if you read the Bible, why do you teach evolution? I mean, the answer is clear, black and white. I don't think people should have more than one religion. I think you should have whatever religious beliefs you're comfortable with. Religious beliefs, lack of religious beliefs. I'm not going to dictate to you how you should believe, whether you should believe, whether you should not believe. That's why I don't stand up here and tell you that if you accept evolution, you must reject God. Any more than I will say, if you accept God, you must automatically reject evolution. Um, if you read the Bible, why do you teach evolution? I mean, the answer is clear, black, and white. Boy, not everybody reads the Bible. What do we do with those people? We just tell them they're wrong. They're all going to hell, by the way, uh, even though they may never have seen a Bible. What do we do about all the people that died before the Bible was written, or while it was being written, before they had a chance to read it? Where are they right now? We're well, just going to automatically, off the cuff, condemn these people. Um, well, I don't think we can do that. I don't think that, um, you know, you should necessarily say, you know, okay, this is my religious belief, and it should be yours because I'm right. And that's the only basis for this, because the Bible is a book of faith, right? You believe it or you don't believe it? If you believe it, well, great, good for you. How many different versions of the Bible are there? Just one? Oh, I don't think so. There are different interpretations. My Catholic Bible, when I was growing up, has extra books in it. The books of the Apocrypha. I'm, I'm sorry. Heresy. Okay. Now I'm going to be heckled. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Talk about ad hominem attacks, right? Thank you. Um, I won't, by the way, return the favor. I, I, I won't do that. Um, you know, there's a billion Catholics in the world. They're all wrong. We're right. We know we're right because we're who we are. I'm divinely inspired. I know I'm right. Somebody else makes the same claim. It's the same thing we're doing up here in this debate. Stand up right now if you walked into this room believing that evolution was the be-all, the end-all, the word and the way, and now you've changed your mind. Or vice versa. I'm a Bible-thumping Christian, by golly, but you know what? I'm going to throw my Bible in the trash can because I don't believe it anymore. Did we change anybody's minds that radically tonight? It's not going to happen. I could be standing up here, an audience of Baptists, an audience of Presbyterians. I've given debates and lectures to Unitarian churches, to Catholic churches, to Lutheran churches. I listened. Uh, during the break, I had a gentleman come up and tell me that, you know, 
uh, basically I was misguided, I was evil, I had these evil followers. You know, I don't, I don't know where that, but he loved me. He said, but I love you. You're, you're evil, you're a bad fellow, you're teaching our children all these bad things, but you know, I love you. Well, I appreciate that, thank you. Uh, well, let's see. We've got about 10 subjects open here. I don't know if we're going to be able to close any of them. <laughs> uh, I do appreciate the, the response to, as far as ad hominem attacks, that's certainly not necessary. Uh, and, I, and I agree that uh, should not be included in the debate. The, the material that we're discussing uh, is, needs to stick with science. Quite a few of these questions deal with which version of the Bible and stuff like that. Though I have a very strong opinion on that topic, I don't think that's the purpose of this debate tonight. Uh, we can settle that another night. You mentioned about the footprints. That was interesting uh, to me. St. Louis Zoo put human feet on their Lucy display, and yet not one foot bone was found. One of the professors from Washington University said, this statue is a complete misrepresentation, which is a polite way of saying they lied. The zoo director, Bruce Carr, said, zoo officials have no plans to knuckle under. We cannot be updating every exhibit based upon every new piece of evidence. We look at the overall exhibit and the impression it creates. We think the overall impression this exhibit creates is correct. I know what impression they're trying to get across, too. They're trying to impress the kids with the idea that they've got evidence for evolution when they really don't. The footprints you referred to found in the ash, it's interesting how they date that ash, by the way. We've got a long answer to that on videotape number seven, my question answer. And somebody mentioned during the, they came during the break and, and said, you're just in this for the money. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, I don't charge anything for my seminars. I have produced videotapes for 10 years that are not copyrighted. Anybody can get them and copy them and return them and get their money back. Show me any evolutionist that does the same thing, would you please? These footprints found in the ash, uh, they said here are 3.75 million years old, but they're perfectly normal human footprints. They even said in National Geographic, the footprints are described as remarkably similar to those of modern man. The form of his foot was exactly the same as ours. Weight-bearing pressure patterns in the prints resemble human ones. Footprints so very much like our own. And yet, on the cover of National Geographic, they put dark-skinned, ape-like creatures. Here's a case where they find zero bones and create a missing link from footprints. Now, if the footprints are exactly like ours, how would you know it's dark-skinned and ape-like? Secondly, why did they put a toe separation if it's exactly like ours? This is propaganda, folks. This is not for education. This is propaganda and ought to be removed from the books. Oh, I think one more, I need my mic on. There'll be one more question from each uh, gentleman, and then we'll have the closing remarks after that. So one more question each. Can we and take then... like a two-minute break before the closing remarks? Sure, okay. we can. Because I want to get some more water. All right. I got oh. half of my Thanks. Um, I did not get time to call up the slides that I have for this one, but I cover this pretty thoroughly on my uh, video number six about the fossil record and the sorting of the fossils. The question says, please explain the order in the fossil record from simple to complex. If you use your infamous bird bones and clams argument, please keep in mind that there are far more than birds and clams. Okay, um, let me explain what the bird to clam argument is. What has happened in the early 1800s, some people decided evolution is true, and now we must go look for the evidence. 